Today we are going to be talking about the top 5 penny stocks that will be spiking in July 2019. The reason that I could say this confidently is because the companies on this list literally tell you the exact date at which price changing events will occur. They do this through of course releasing FDA approval dates, phase trial data releases as well as dropping many hits and clues to lead us to the right conclusion. But let me tell you these are not stocks to just dabble in. Penny stocks, especially of the biotech variety, are simply not for the faint of heart. The rapid movements in this sector mean that you're going to really need to be on your A game. That means having a plan. You don't just buy and then randomly hold. You need to have a concrete entry point and a concrete exit point, and that means that you're going to need to be doing some of your own due diligence. But the purpose of this video is to kind of help you get started on that process, but do not just buy based on my recommendations. But anyways, before we get into it, if you would like to trade the stocks on this list in a commission-free and hassle-free way, my recommendation is Weeble, and it's actually better than free because if you sign up with our link below, you will get a free stock for signing up and depositing with them. But of course, you do know that a lot of work goes into these videos, and the only thing that I really ask of you is that you hit that beautiful and ravishing like button and also subscribe if you see value in the following video okay so kpti will have their fda approval decision on the 6th of july this is for their drug from myeloma now this drug if approved will directly compete with pharma giant amgen's drug which is known as cryopolis and the reason this is very interesting is because there's quite a bit of debacle between amgen and kpti there was an alleged orchestration by former managers of amgen to run off and make a competing product using Amgen's very own trade secrets and sales tactics and some of the same sales people. We'll talk about that more in a second though. So in figuring out the potential market for KPTI's new drug, it makes sense to go ahead and look for the main competitor. I dug into the numbers and found Amgen's PowerPoint presentation from Q3 of 2018 and pulled some revenue numbers for the competing drug. And Cryopolis brought in $232 million in revenue for Q3 of 2018. Now, this might not sound like a lot of money or even look like a lot of money when looking at this balance sheet for big old Amgen. But for our biotech play, KPTI, this is a huge deal. In fact, the entire revenue for KPTI for the entire year of 2018 was only $30 million. And that is across the entire company. As a reminder, Cryopolis' revenue under Amgen for just one quarter, one quarter was $232 million. So you can clearly see how KPTI entering in as a new direct competitor could substantially increase its revenue and thus create some insane potential for the stock, even if it only takes 10% of the market segment. Now that's the upside, let's go more into how to play this. We love FDA plays because FDA winners such as SCYX and ADMA from my previous videos provide price action for us to trade off of. Quite beautiful price action. And we love FDA losers because they also provide beautiful price action that allows us to either take an overreaction position or a managed short position. And as we know, final stage or PUDFA stage drugs have about an 80% approval rate based on previous years and previous rates released by the FDA. So we like to see drugs in the stage because it means that we have at least one big probability in our favor, but FDA approvals also serve as quite a beautiful catalyst for small cap plays such as this one. But anyways, this FDA approval was planned for earlier, but was then extended due to the committee wanting to wait until we receive data from their Boston trial. This month, we started seeing press releases and new coverage in the media regarding the effectiveness of this drug. I love this. It's volume driving news. The headlines vary, but in general, the theme is best portrayed by this quote. The drug has been found to induce a response in a subset of patients. This is what you see often in the biotech industry, and it's sort of like this casual, somewhat effectiveness that is generally a lot easier to show than, say, a high effective rate. But it doesn't really matter because as long as it's effective in a subset of patients and it also has safety features, then it's a potentially lucrative drug for the company because just, just because it's effective in a subset of patients, if it's more effective than competing drugs, or if it's the same amount of effective, then oftentimes the FDA will deem it worthy to approve and oftentimes doctors will prescribe it even if doctors know that it will only treat a quarter of people because that's the best solution out there. 100% of people may still have to order it even though only 25% of people have success with it, but you know they get money for all 100% of people. Once it's bought, you don't really get paid based on the effectiveness, you just get paid based on how many it sells. So here we have a drug that is at worst somewhat effective and also has a reasonable standard for patient safety. 
It's about to undergo its decision on again the 6th. And it has essentially one competitor in a segment with a huge amount of demand, as evidenced by the massive amount of revenue that I portrayed earlier. Now, what makes this even more interesting is that a ton of the board over at KPTI came from AMGN. Like I said earlier, AMGN had this little debacle where there was a mass exodus of its salespeople. But leading up to this, KPTI slowly picked off its top performers in quite a devious way. Its managers slowly hired the top performers at Amgen and hired them for top spots, prepping them for the release of the drug that is now potentially about to be approved and will directly compete with Amgen. This shows how fierce and interesting the biotech industry is, but in any case, what this means to us is that now we have opportunity. Now that we've identified a potential catalyst, we can then move over to the technicals and plot out a plan of action. So KPTI got massively beat down upon delay of Selenixer's FDA approval back in February and has been slowly gaining back its steam as we get closer to FDA approval. Now, we have now broken into our upward direction over our long-term SMA line, which isn't super common amongst these small-cap biotech plays, but it is, of course, something that we like to see because buying in and upon an upward direction is another thing pushing the odds of success in our favor. We want as many things pushing the odds of success in our favor because at the end of the day, trading and especially biotech trading is all an odds game. The more odds we have for success, the more likely we'll come out on top. But of course, even if there's a 10% odd of failure, we still could be in that 10%. So we have to be consistent over the long run and aim to have profits over the long run. But in any case, strictly technical upward potential would put us back to before where the drug got delayed. This makes sense. If this was the valuation before the drug got delayed, it would make sense that if the drug got approved that we'd cover back to that. But this is when fundamentals come into play. We know that KPTI has a functioning drug that can compete with Amgen's who brings in hundreds of millions of dollars from that drug in revenue each quarter. Meanwhile, KPTI has taken the top salesman from Amgen that actually drove that revenue in the first place. So it's not unreasonable to say that if KPTI gets approved, we'll see Amgen lose at least some of its market share. And even just losing 30 million would mean a doubling in revenue for KPTI. And of course, that's a very conservative estimate. So I'd say that this combined with the upper direction will give us an interesting entry point as we get closer to the FDA decision. The most important thing though is to have a concrete plan. We don't just get in based on our hypothesis that we gathered based on the fundamentals, but rather we wait for a technical confirmation. If the technical price action does not back up what you're seeing and what you're predicting based on the fundamentals, then don't take a position. We need to pair our hypothesis with actual clean facts. Wait for a confirmation, buy in upon that, and then if we see early warning signs of a reversal, then take an exit. Okay, so CBIO will have their phase two final data between the 6th and 10th for their drug for hemophilia. The great thing about trading biotech is that even if you lose money, you can be thankful that you don't need these drugs. Well, hopefully you don't. But anyway, CBIO has an interesting pattern where its uptrends tend to take place over a one to two week period and then sell off. It is also prone to overselling and at times overbuying as well. This is great. We like the pattern of overbuying and overselling because that means that we can buy in at a good deal and sell out when we are overbought. But moreover, we have this ability to buy in upon confirmation and simply ride the price strength up and over the SMA line. As you know, real estate between the price action and the blue SMA line is the measure of strength. The farther apart they are, the stronger the price action is, and the closer they are, the weaker it is. This has a pattern of quite a clean run-up over our blue SMA line. But in any case, we are still trading pretty close to newly formed support, with not too far to go down to long-term support at 6.2. But we also have upward potential to recent resistance at $11.19. So we have nearly $4 of upward potential in a stock that has a pattern of overselling and overbuying. It also has a pattern of struggling to find direction over our long-term SMA line as shown repeatedly and we have a dollar of upward potential to that extremely conservative line of resistance at the long-term SMA line. So directional resistance is about a dollar up and that's a pretty good conservative point. And while previous patterns don't guarantee future results, they do provide us with some bearings to form a plan on how to attack this stock if we do see some positive data or a positive catalyst in July. Okay, so the next one is Dova. Now, I had to dig a bit more to find Dova, but Dova will have an FDA approval decision on June 30th. They already have one recent FDA approval under their belt for Doptalet, and they have another one in progress for a different use of this drug. Now, roughly how this works is that drugs tend to undergo 
the series of phase trials for certain applications and for the treatment of specific ailments. And then if the drug gets approved, it usually still needs to go through another process if the company wants to use that to treat another ailment. This varies a little bit and I'm not 100% clear on some of the different discrepancies that happen with this because sometimes it doesn't have to go through all the different trials. And I think that has something to do with the safety or the measured safety that they found in the first trial. But in any case, all you need to know is that it does need to go through another approval stage. In the case of Dova's dop to let drug, the next application will have its FDA decision on June 30th. But in any case, moving over to the technicals, Dova got beat down like a rabid dog after a rough quarter and specifically due to some turnover in the executive suite. And make no mistake, Dova is a risky company that is losing money each quarter, but the promise of future drug profits continue to incite investors. And moreover, this beatdown gives us a lot of upward potential relative to downward potential. And the monkeys are ranking it at around $18, which could help draw in more interest if we do have some good news. Okay, so BPMX will be releasing their phase 2 data for their rosacea drug in early 2019. Now, it really sucks that they don't give exact dates. And this month is kind of weird on exact dates. They're kind of given more durations and periods but in any case I'll tell you a little bit more how to find these but you may already know BPMX from their recent success with their drug for acne BPX01. This had a positive phase trial released earlier this month. In any case BPMX reported on the 22nd of May that their last patient had completed the trials. Thus BPMX is now analyzing the data and will report back in early July 2019. Well how will we be able to spot which day it will come out given that they gave us a long duration. Well, last time we had a phase data release for the company, we saw a huge spike in volume, or at least abnormal volume in the pre-market, and then a huge spike of volume at market open. Oftentimes, if you do a quick volume scan at market open, you'll find stocks that have big catalysts, and if this is already on your list, you'll be able to spot exactly what's going on. Taking a look at volume and movement and price can be two ways to identify a potential catalyst confirmation that will allow us to trade off of the price action. Okay, so this next one is by no means a penny stock, so I didn't include it in the number count for this video because I don't like to have misleading titles. But it is relevant in the sense that it will have an FDA decision on June 30th. Now, technically speaking, Retrofin is trading on the lower edge. We are still in the downward direction underneath our red long-term SMA line. But we do see some closing in of the gap, which is, of course, an indication of weakening of downward direction. The beauty, though, is that we do have what appears to be the early warning signs of a reversal with a potential catalyst to jumpstart it if the drug does get approved right in before July. The monkeys slash analysts are giving it about a 76% upside and the monkeys are bullish on the stock. We also have an increase of insider buys with more buys in the last three months as well as in the last 12 months. Those who know the company the most those inside seem to be bullish on the stock and that isn't unreasonable given the current share price compared to where it was at just a few months ago. So I would say this is definitely worth watching and finding good entry points with. I would say make sure to get in at a good deal. We like to buy stocks when they're at least below fair value but oversold is ideal. Okay now the last one actually has its FDA approval decision in mid-August. A ton of stocks start to rally before FDA approvals and oftentimes if you can get in at a technical confirmation, you can enjoy some of the profits from these rallies. When trading these types of stocks, research is very important and being proactive even more so. I've always been a huge believer of the motto, take care of the work and the work will take care of you and that's ever so true with these stocks. You need to put in the work and you need to take care of everything in terms of research. And, of course, being proactive. Now, Kala has a few periods of clean run-ups from oversold to overbought. Most notably, this period where we have this clear price strength over our blue SMA line. This is our favorite because of the fact that it allows us to find great entry points. Simply buying in upon confirmation, that first candlestick holding above the SMA line, and selling out at early warning signs of a reversal, that first candlestick breaking the SMA line, would allow us to take a profit. So... We'll clearly be on the lookout for this in July. I'd love to see some early warning signs of a reversal, preferably if we can see it consistently stay in an upward direction. The interesting thing about Kala is that it's largely owned by institutions. They are also known as smart money holders. Investment institutions have access to the best resources to evaluate companies and run risk reports, and thus companies largely owned by pristine institutions will generally be safer bets as compared to ones that aren't. Of course, we are going to need to see the price action back this up before taking a position. We use the fundamentals to explain catalysts, 
but it's important to use actual price action to evaluate our risk to reward ratio, as well as to back up what we're thinking. Anyways, I do hope that this video was helpful for you. I wish you the best of luck trading these stocks in July 2019. If you want to keep up to date with all the news, I do recommend checking out the free Facebook group Zip Trader Circle. The link will be in the description below. And of course, if you're wondering how I found these dates, I use the website Biopharma Catalyst. I'll put the link in the description below as well. Everything that you're going to need is on that site. And of course, if you have any more questions, feel free to comment below or reach out to us at the Zip Trader Circle Facebook group. Anyways, have a great day, folks, and I'll see you in the next video.